Historic textiles are fascinating objects. Each one has a life and history of its own. If we're lucky, quilts sometimes come to us with stories and photographs of the maker and their family, which really helps to bring the quilt to life. But many of these stories have been lost over time. However, that doesn't mean we can't find out a bit more by playing quilt detective. This video explores a few ways you can learn about the history of your quilt, by looking at fabrics, stitching and style, to build up a story about the quilt and its maker. Of course, if you do have some details about the maker, using family history resources are a good place to start. If you know the maker's name, a few relevant dates and a location of where they might have lived, you can use census and ancestry records to build a picture of their family life. Where they lived, their siblings, types of occupations, if they took in lodgers or even had servants. This can help you get an idea of the social class of the maker. But don't worry if you don't have this information. We can get a lot of clues from the piece itself. First, we can look at style. Certain types of patchwork and quilting, using particular fabrics, were popular and fashionable at different times. Mosaic patchwork, where shapes are wrapped around paper templates and then hand sewn together, has a very long history, dipping in and out of popularity from the 18th century to the present day. But looking at the fabrics that have been used and the papers in the back can give us some clues. If the piece is unfinished, sometimes we can glimpse the writing and text on the papers, which helps to date the piece. Some have advertisements, dates and postmarks from envelopes, all adding to the story of the piece. Log cabin was popular in the late 19th and 20th centuries, with the earliest examples dating to around 1840 on the Isle of Man. Corded quilting was popular in the 18th century and before, and then revived again in the 1920s and 30s, when it featured in magazines as Italian quilting. Shadow quilting was also popular in the 1930s, and used a lot for clothing items such as dressing gowns, bed jackets and slippers. Whole cloth quilts, traditional to Wales and the North Country in Hoyk, were made throughout the 19th and 20th centuries, but they had their heyday in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, with a revival under the Rural Industries Bureau in the 20s and 30s. Then we can explore the fabrics. We know some fabrics are rarer or more expensive at certain times. Cottons were highly prized in the 18th and early 19th century. Pieces like the Mary Prince coverlet feature a lot of different printed cottons and were likely to have been made by someone of a higher social class. You can see the dyes and the colours are strong and the printed design sometimes very detailed. As a highly valued fabric, even the smallest scraps are used. You can see these small octagons have been pieced together from several tiny scraps. By the end of the 19th century, cotton was a cheaper, everyday fabric available to lower social classes. The colour palette is limited to make manufacturing process quicker, and cheaper, and the quality is poorer. Silk is not practical for everyday use, and so has often been used by the fashionable elite. Silk was used for the earliest known dated patchwork piece in the collection, the 1718 silk patchwork coverlet. When cottons began to decline in status in the second half of the 19th century, Higher classes turn back to using fashionable silks and velvets for their patchwork, and this features in a lot of decorative patchwork parlour items from the late 19th century. Lastly, we can look at how it's been made. Pieces with very complex tessellating designs, such as the Billings coverlet, would have taken education and time, pointing towards a certain social class. Items can be made by hand or machine but those items with some machine stitching can only be made after the 1860s, when domestic machines were readily available. Sewing machines did allow greater speed and freedom for doing long straight seams. Machine sewing was often combined with hand sewing for certain patchwork and quilting styles. 